Okay, man. Okay. Okay. What is up, everyone? Welcome to episode 10 of Plant Xbox Podcast. And this is powered by Weapon Will Podcast and Weapon Will Patreon. So make sure you subscribe. Uh, I am your host, Best Spot Kid Smooth. Got my co host, I ain't Lords, Lord Attic, Gaming Attic. What's Root. going on, guys? Room to kill. Yeah, no, don't say that. Classic. You know what's funny? Uh, I had an email that used to be room to kill at yahoo.com. It's what I originally had my gamer tag to. Yeah. And I remember one time I was in high school and she asked for my email. And I had, like, I had to think of a different email because I'm like, am I really going to tell this computer teacher that my email is called room to kill? Yeah, yeah. That's. Hold on. So I have to <laughs> Attic, my bad, and I know we're uh, recording. Um, can you check your microphone source? It doesn't sound like it's coming from your mic, your actual mic. It sounds like it's coming from another source. Maybe your 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 webcam. Get it while better. Yeah, that's much better. I got, got that HD uh, audio. <laughs> yeah, it, it might have been coming from the camera. Yeah, uh, man. So last week's episode, pretty awesome. Uh, we had uh, Colin Moriarty showed up. Uh, we, it was a great discussion. Got a lot of positive feedback. It's currently up on VG's channel. Patreon showed up, showed out well for that one. That show is currently at uh, over ten thousand views, so that's that's pretty good for a you know episode for Planet Xbox. So let's keep it strong. Let's keep the energy. Uh, let's keep the hype. And, and, and you know, plan on reaching out to mo- having more conversations like that. You know, Weapon was definitely a. A different type of podcast and we you know we, we could do things differently but still be entertaining so you know uh i plan on reaching out to you know more guests in general you know after doing ilp for so long and having a variety of guests because i, I would say you know one thing ilp's done very well is we have been able to have a huge variety of guests yeah. and uh you know for the most part i've kept in contact with the majority of them so you know, I was thinking, you know, maybe we'll do, maybe not put these under the, the Planet Xbox, like, banner, but, like, put them on the Patreon, like, it, developer interviews and stuff. Yeah. I mean, the, um, I mean, I don't mind it, Planet Xbox, you know, previously, um, when I used to, and this is pretty much the third incarnation of Planet Xbox podcast, we've, you know, we used to do developer um interviews and you know and guests so i i don't i don't really um mind um holding it down maybe we do you know things uh that aren't behind the uh uh the patreon because i do need to support the uh the channel but i got some videos cooking um what have you been playing attic this week um i've been playing a lot of persona i've also been playing xenonauts too it's like a spiritual successor of xcom Mm-hmm. They they sent me over a review code, and I've been playing this game called like Illyrium Shift or something like that. I, I always like butcher the the pronunciation, uh, but I've been playing those games. Uh, been pretty good. I do have a Steam Deck on on the way to me, so that's going to be interesting. Yeah, and it, hold on, continue on. I got to take this call. I apologize, man. Hold on. Yeah, so that th- that's pretty much what I've been playing. I I, I do have a. A lot of stuff that I plan on uh, taking care of. Um, I'm hoping that you know we end up getting our hands on some uh, uh, some Starfield here here quick, man. That that because that's what I really want to play. I want to play some Starfield. It's just I don't know when they're gonna do that. It's it's it'll be interesting, man. It'll be interesting. You know, I, I also been playing you know some some more Persona. Yeah, I got got past the fourth or fifth palace doing pretty good with that and it's just it's it's been a pretty good thing man it's been a pretty good thing i don't know what smooth's doing you know but until smooth comes back i guess we'll we'll hit some of these these patreon questions because smooth just took off and didn't really give me a whole lot of uh heads up what was going on but that that, that that's smooth for you man that's smooth for you all right, so let's get some of these Patreon questions. Uh, we're going to 
start with what is the best game Xbox has ever made since the Xbox One release? Uh, it came from Dry the Gamer. Appreciate the uh, support, Dry the Gamer. Mm. I think that's interesting. Like he he didn't really go into specifics about whether or not it would be like made from Xbox or maybe a second party deal. Which you know people get mad at me because I'm saying second party and I don't get that. There is a such thing as second party. A second party is just a studio that works closely with Xbox that Xbox doesn't own. You would consider like Square Enix is a second party studio for PlayStation. It's just, you know, up until recently, Moon Studios, because they made the Ori games. I would say, pro I don't know. I feel like Gears 5 was really good. I really enjoyed Gears 5. I felt like the story of that game was, uh, you know, relatively very entertaining. It's just, I think the last act, well, no, the th it's neither the third or fourth act. It's whenever they're in, ever they're in, like, the desert area, and I think... I think you guys know what I'm talking about, that desert area. I think that's the only time in the game that was really weird. It was the only time where I'm sitting here just like, I go from this snow area, this amazing snow area, to whatever this desert part is. And I think that that's definitely one of the issues that I had with it. I would say I, I really like Sunset Overdrive, if I'm allowed to say, like, some second-party studio names. Like, uh, you know, Insomniac, obviously, they're owned by PlayStation now, but they did make Sunset Overdrive. I wasn't the biggest fan of Quantum Break. I felt like they could have did that game a lot better, to be honest with you. I am also wasn't a huge fan of Rise of Rome. I thought it was a good game, but I felt like the amount of stuff they could improve on that game could have been dramatically better. And I think, I think that's, I think that's about it, man. You know, when it comes to those. There's there's a di there's a variety of games that they made during the Xbox One generation, you know. Recore I thought was a fun game, you know. I think that a game is a actually something that they can revisit and make a sequel to. Well, is it was it the best game in the world? No, but I think it does have a, a solid foundation that would make sense. Yeah, th there's a variety of things dry the gamer, but you know I appreciate it. We'll get back to your question. When Smooth gets back, wherever he went to, he went to take a phone call. But then we got Alex King. If you had to choose, which one would you rather have uh, for the limit of y'all show? You got A. Your podcast can only have an episode a year, but it's a two-hour show interview talk with Phil Spencer. You got B. You get all Xbox games hardware for free for review. C, you're invited to all the Microsoft events around the country. D, you can only stream on YouTube, but you never get copyright claimed or uh, reported or banned for anything you say or do. <laughs> you have okay, so you have to choose. So he's not talking about like an individual thing. I'm assuming he's wanting us to stay in the Xbox system because that the uh, the last option, you know, you can stream on YouTube but you never get copyrighted, claimed, or reported, or banned, that, that could be used for some, some power moves. You know, If you wasn't worrying about getting hit with a copyright strike or a copyright claim, you could potentially do a lot of things. You could just live stream UFC shows. You, <laughs> the amount of money you can make if you knew YouTube wasn't going to retaliate would be legendary. But obviously if it's not something like that in terms of like a monetary value, I wouldn't go with the last one. Uh, then you're going to look at, you know, you're invited to all the Microsoft events around the country. It depends if they compensate me for it, if they pay for all of it, then I would probably be more open to that one. But if it's not paid for and I have to pay to go to Gamescom, I have to pay to go to Japan for Tokyo game show. I have to pay to, to go to E3, well, whatever you want to call that, all the PAXs. Uh, but he said Microsoft events. But they go to a lot of places. I don't know. Are you yeah, reading the uh, the Patreon question? Yeah. From... So uh, right now, he, uh, I'm on the second one, which yep. we'll go back to the first one in a yep. second. Is that if you had to choose which one would you rather have the limit of your show, your podcast can only have an episode a year, but it's a two-hour show interview with Phil Spencer. Yep. 
B, you get all the Xbox games hardware review for free. Mm -hmm. C, you're invited to all the Microsoft events around the country. Or D, you can only stream on YouTube, but you never get copyright claimed or reported or banned for anything you say or do. Uh, I would take the Xbox coverage. Uh, I wouldn't get all the Xbox games and hardware free for to review because at the end of the day, um, that stuff, the coverage, the reviews, the hardware, stuff like that, they're helpful. And that's, uh, you know, you save a lot of money. Um, the events, I don't care about, I don't care for traveling, right? So I don't really care if I go to an event or not. Um, YouTube, like the, the content streaming, stuff like that. I have low and high points. Sometimes I'm barely streaming and and sometimes I'm always streaming, but the latter is pretty much what happens often. Uh, though you, you can you can have one episode. You can only have an episode a year, but it's two hour show interview talk with Phil Spencer. That's pretty cool. But again, it's one. It's just one a year. Wrong. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I, I think B is the best case scenario for all year round type of thing you'd get all the hardware they do you get all the games you know Val comes out starfield comes out mm -hmm. perfect art yep you know and if he's talking about all xbox game i'm curious if he's talking about like the game pass stuff because mm -hmm. uh, microsoft handles that too so i would see look I, I was telling him like the last topic if you was going for a monetary value and we didn't care and we knew for a fact we'd never get copyright claimed or or copyright striked or banned or yep. reported or anything you could do so much illegal stuff and make crazy money, but that's not for the show, you know? So obviously I don't even really see where the last option could be an option in general, because, uh, for a podcast scenario, I don't see it really helping too much, but I could see, and it's like, I would go to the Microsoft events if they front the bill. Yeah. But if, if I got to pay for everything, nah, man, we ain't doing that. Uh, so I think B would be the best one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a good question. And, and, and uh, what was question number uno? Uh, this is Dry the Gamer. I must, uh, he says, what is the best game Xbox has made since the Xbox One released? What did you answer? I, I missed your answer, Attic, or did you skip it? Um, I said there was a couple things. I, I don't know if he was talking about exclusively first party or not. But if, you know, he's talking about everyone, you know, I think Sunset Overdrive was a solid game. I don't think it was the best. Mm -hmm. I think Rise Center Rome was a really good game. I don't think it was the best. Yep. Uh, Recore, same thing. It was a fun game. It wasn't the best. Mm -hmm. I didn't really like Quantum Break. I would say Gears 5 for the, uh, for, for the Xbox One generation. I really enjoyed Gears 5. You know, it was a, a fun game. You know, what's funny is I did a... A review. Uh, I did a video today talking about the the cross gen stuff, mm -hmm. and I brought up when we played Gears Five, and you had the uh, the Xbox One X, and I had the Xbox One S, and it was loading on your the world was loading on your screen before it was loading on mine. And it, it was causing you to have to protect me. Yeah, yeah, because you couldn't hide behind. Up. You couldn't even hide. like I had ice pillars I could hide behind for cover you, and you didn't have those same. Yeah, that, that, things that's why. You know, maybe. I'm remembering that game for the wrong reason. <laughs> yeah, no. but I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I can't say it. Didn't. I think my uh, I would say the best Xbox exclusive um, during the Xbox One era. I'm going to say it's Titanfall, but I know Xbox didn't make that. You know, I would actually say it was Titanfall too. You know, now that you said it, I would say it's Titanfall. Titanfall was such a unique, fun experience, and I'm not really giving it to the second one. It would yeah. be mainly for the third. But I really enjoyed playing Titanfall. Yeah, yeah. Titanfall won Xbox One 2014. Uh, it was... I, it, I, if Xbox wasn't such a hated platform at the time, I think it could have been... It should have been the game that ushered the Xbox One that defined the Xbox One. Like what you know, Halo was for the original Xbox, like what Gears was to the Xbox 360. Titanfall was essentially that to the... Xbox One and, and could have been better if I had to go pick on with Xbox made during the Xbox One generation. Now the Xbox One generation is pretty much blended, dude, uh, because of you know the series and um, I'm going to say the I think the best game outside of like like from first party that I feel like 
was uh like i mean i i enjoyed gears 5 of course but it, it's more we, there's five gears of war games for a reason right um i'm gonna say forza horizon 2 because forza horizon, horizon 2 was good man i remember you know i don't even like racing games but i remember like playing an absurd amount on that long airport stretch on horizon 2 yeah i remember us literally spending hours on that road just like uh, at drag racing each other like yeah is that the game where is that the one where you race a because every game they had you race something like crazy whether it be a, a boat a plane i think it was a plane or a train a um i can't remember it might have been a, a a plane but that one i love the soundtrack that that um game introduced me into chromio um I, it, the thing is, it made me feel, it gave me a certain feel about racing games that I haven't had since um, I want to say since uh, Need for Speed Most Wanted, maybe. And even then, I didn't I, I plugged way more hours in Forza Horizon 2 than I did in Need for Speed Most Wanted. And Need for Speed Most Wanted was my you know favorite racing game for a long time. You know what I mean? To only be eclipsed by the next series of uh, for, uh, Forza Horizon games uh, all those years later um but no that was a good question um we're gonna get into the show a couple things happened this week a couple big things and i almost forgot about one when preparing the show attic almost forgot about one uh major thing so um r.i.p to xbox live gold oh the core thing yeah i made uh i made a video got a lot of hate for it but you know what fuck it i don't care like I'm so sick and tired of the people attacking me over that damn shit. Like, like people were really upset because I'm not feeling that. And it's like at the same time, it's like you might be upset with me because I'm not feeling it. Well, guess what? I, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling you feeling me not feeling it. Like, yeah, it, it's just like I could give my opinion and still love the brand and still really want what's best for the brand, but I just, ugh, I don't know why, man. It just didn't. Okay, I'll let you break it down, and then I'll give you my opinion on it. Because we're probably going to argue. Yeah. I don't know why. No, I mean, I don't know. the reason I feel like we're going to argue. Yeah. Um, um, okay. So, when I tried, I tried to do a video on this as soon as it, like, you know, happened. And I was, it was so new that I was, I was, I actually confused myself during the video. And... I like it and I don't like it at the same time. I like the fact that they got rid of Xbox Live Gold and they came up with something that's competitive to what PlayStation is doing with their tiered system. And it's, 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 it's pretty comparable. You got the online console multiplayer, you got the catalog. Instead of those cheap Xbox Live Gold games, even though you get to keep those games, even when you convert to this, you get like pretty much gen defying uh, games that you get like pretty much like you get like what gear is it gears five or gears four you get you get gears five you get halo five you get halo wars two you get hellblade you get a piece of uh, much an ip from every studio they own. keep talking i'll get a list of it that you get an ip from a, a, a from a studio or a publisher that they own in one of their best games the uh you get the discounts from xbox game pass and stuff what you don't get you don't get cloud gaming you don't get you know ea play and you don't get um, the uh, PC Game Pass and stuff like that. So it's like, okay, it's nine ninety nine, uh, ten dollars a month, or you can buy it out for the year for sixty bucks, which is cool. You still have that option. But then you get the upgrade, and this is the thing that messes it all up for me in terms of adding this new basic model, the console one, which is one dollar more. So it's at this point, it's considered an upgrade. You get all the Game Pass games, and not to mention, real quick they structure the paperwork uh that they announced it with it's structured like a tier system it's not people like they're replacing gold it's the same thing no it's not when you change the name that can change everything when it used to be called xbox live gold it was a service that was on the side that no one cared about but the moment they made it to an entry version gold uh entry version xbox game pass and they made it to a tier system it has different expectations yeah so the console one which is the, the basic game pass today that's all it is right it's the it's the game pass base model right 
which is you get all the games, you know, the day one games, you get all those perks. You don't get EA uh, play. I um, mean, you don't get the PC, obviously, unless you upgrade the ultimate. But the thing is, now that they broke it down with what you get, you lose a major feature by upgrading, and that's the online console multiplayer. So I don't like it because at this point, it's like, OK, if you want Game Pass and you want online multiplayer, if you don't get Game Pass Ultimate, you get co- you get two versions of Game Pass like it, to for twenty one dollars or twenty two dollars. Right. It, it doesn't the upgrade path makes no sense. Right. If you go to core, like how do they upgrade you to console? You don't you won't upgrade the console. You just upgrade to ultimate. At least you would hope that's what someone would do. But what happens right when you up, you're like, you know what? I'm going to upgrade. The, you get the promotional offer to upgrade to console. OK. And the first thing you do is go and play Halo 5 or Gears 5 multiplayer. Then what? They're going to say you need Game Pass Core or Game Pass Ultimate. How do they how do you go back? I don't understand how that works. This is what I don't like. And I I apologize, guys, for the lighting. It's kind of messed up. My my head, my face is pretty dark. Oh, uh, it's too dark. Normally do this earlier in the day, but we decided to wait till eight o'clock at night. You got the you got the uh, the the lighting. I understand the light. You got that, that orange tent lighting. Yeah, well, I think I'm gonna have to replace these um, with LEDs. These light with LEDs. Yeah, but anyway, I don't like the fact because this is how this could happen, and people sit there and say, "Oh, the casual consumer isn't isn't this uh, ignorant when it comes to." Yes, they are. I, I worked in customer service with Dish Network, taking thousands of calls a week for two years. Mm-hmm. They they definitely are this dumb, and, and, and it's not because anything bad on people. It's just. If you're not looking and keep and keeping your ear to the ground, you're not going to be educated on the matter. That's equivalent to like me, ex- uh, like smooth expecting me to know what the hell the NBA, or the NFL is doing. I don't keep track of it. I don't care. So, if if you're going for Game Pass, and let's say let's say me and you, smooth, we we casual casuals. All right, we only play, you know, two K, which I probably wouldn't even play two K mm-hmm. if I was a casual. We play Call of Duty every year. You know what I'm saying? And we sit here and they're like, you know what? couple friends of our jump in and they're like addict smooth let's play this exo whatever that game's called yep so we jump in there for this exo game and it says i don't want to pay 60 for it you don't got to pay 60 addict you don't got to pay 60 smooth just get the game pass you already in core just upgrade for a dollar okay i'll upgrade for a dollar so we upgrade we download the game Keep in mind, we just play Call of Duty. Launch up the whatever that dinosaur game is. Exo Primal. Exo Primal. Launch that up. Push play. Try to get into an online lobby. They hit you with the you can't play games without being uh, you can't play online. What, what you mean? We just play Call of Duty. So I'm sitting here. I'm like, well, what do I got to do to play online? You either got to pay 60 for Exo Primal or give us another $5 a month. And you or, or and then it's just like okay, I'm not buying Primal then. I'm not doing this. I'm going to just go back to playing Call of Duty. They go play Call of Duty. Now they can't play Call of Duty without going down or up in the in the tier system. It, it's just like people who's acting like this isn't a Wait, big deal. I don't deal. get it. Like Oh, I, I get what you're saying. All right, now not from Call of Duty. Wait. I don't understand how they would be able to. Because they upgraded to Game Pass. So if they don't go back to core where there's online connectability or the online feature okay, or okay. go to old Game Pass Ultimate, they're not going to be able to play Call of Duty. So they literally are trying to have you upgrade to play like it, it, to play a game on Game Pass. Realize there's mo- like a multiplayer feature to it. And you could either A, bend the knee and just pay the extra $5 or you could go back down. They're encouraging you to go down if you don't go up. It's confusing. Yeah, it's just like, and people sitting there coming at me hardcore over this stuff, and it's just like, dude, there is no defending this. This is this is like a joke when it comes to, whoever decided this was the way, this isn't the way. 
Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I think they had an opportunity here, man. They, um, in, I think online multiplayer should be, should have been a part of all the, all of them. I think with like, or just completely like, ah, it's, it's, I don't, it's, I feel like, it just, just it's just it's a it's a dumb thing. It's it's really a, a dumb option. But the thing is, what this ultimately does is this automatically increases Xbox Game Pass subscribers, which I just won my bet with Black Bond because Game Pass subscribers are definitely going to go at least touch at least fifty million um, with this it, change, it might, if not more. Know, to be honest with you, it might go up more than that. I think there's a, a a decent possibility you could see this hit like sixty or seventy. It just depends on how much that core game pass has gone up, and they haven't been uh, very vocal to us. Yeah, you know, because it it could, it could have went up above thirty million or even maybe forty million. Mm -hmm. But considering they're so far behind their initial sell, uh, their initial goal, they might not have even said anything. Uh, so you know, it, regardless of what it is, it's still pathetic. Even if that goes up to over a hundred million, now you got like seventy million people that's going to get confused and might just leave the the ecosystem entirely. Like, just think about that. Like, you were just playing Call of Duty. They're 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 trying to get you to upgrade to a tier that's above the tier you have now. So you're actively giving Microsoft more money. Give me more money. I like the 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 value of this. And you try to play anything online. Okay, we want more and more money. I, I I see within six months this is fixed. I see them putting online in yeah. that middle tier because, like right now, we might complain, but imagine when the when those those fifty million or however many I don't know how many's in that in that tier system when it comes to how many people's goals that they're going to transfer over yeah. to uh, Xbox uh, Game Pass Core. Uh, imagine when they get into it and because you know they're going to just constantly throw you upgrade a game pass upgrade a game pass upgrade a game pass and the moment these people start to slowly upgrade a game pass they're going to lose a feature that they had paying less yeah and, and then people are like oh but it's always been that way i'm sorry it has but that's because the the naming was different the naming is uh, the naming now is a cool it is an entry system tier system like the netflix it's like equivalent of i got netflix for 9.99 and it has lets me have up to four people i upgrade to the 15.99 one that lets me do 4k or whatever 20 and then they they they, they let me only do two people in that one so does it does that make sense to you to just like limit the amount of stuff that you can do like the way a tier system is supposed to be in infrastructure is you got your beginning tiers, your entry tiers. Anything above that should have Include everything below that. Yeah, entry. yeah, that's weird. That's that's where it throws me off. It's like, yes, if you're if you're doing a tier system, then once you get to the like, so if tier one has three things, right, the next tier should have its exclusive thing plus whatever three things that was in the previous one. And, and so on and, that, and that's not the case here it's and it doesn't really make sense so um i don't know who did that but they really should have like really considered that and i think they need to go back and take a look it's, to me it's not really a big deal because i'm always going to be subscribed to ultimate it's just like it seems like a missed opportunity sure you're going to get everybody into game pass you're going to upgrade their whole entire player base into game pass but you probably lost a few people or hurt morale and um trust and with this this mistake but um that was pretty much something that leaked first and then they formally announced it i think on maybe like maybe tuesday or wednesday uh and uh there this is going live you know right in time for games like starfield to launch um which we got to talk about this i've been very vocal about starfield and the lack of like significant advertising for the game um right now I, and I, I complain because like you know obviously spider-man is starting to get the advertisement they're, they're already doing bus paintings again and it's in tv coverage and stuff like that they're you know they're doing a bunch of pr for it and this game comes out a good uh month and 15 days after starfield and this is like a late october game and they're getting their coverage done in July and Starfield's the early week of September with premium buyers 
get in the game as early as September 1st and we're less than 45 days from release and I have not seen any meaningful advertising just dating back to like what Bethesda used to do with you know, Fallout, even Fallout 76 had massive advertising campaign leading up to its launch. Fallout 4, of course, uh, Skyrim had meaningful advertising months before its launch. And here we are within, we can literally count maybe weeks um, for Starfield and there's no meaningful advertisement. I, like, like if I know but if Zenimax Bethesda is still operating in this entity, their marketing is also better than Xbox. They, they can at least market this thing, right? Look. Let me say that I won't go into details, but I did get an email today over that. So I think you're going to start seeing them pushing because I'm starting to see the progression pushing on my end. I don't know when it's going to be public, but I, I am starting to see a little bit of movement. Like I was literally just at Walmart talking to uh, to Cog, and I was just like, you know, it's kind of interesting that we're we're almost in August and we haven't heard nothing. Yeah, and uh, you know, if 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 we would be in like, like the first week of August, like the like anywhere between like the fifth and the tenth, and we still haven't seen one commercial, I'd be a little concerned. But I think I think though, there's still time. But even if they start pushing them out in August, like in terms of like promoting, mm -hmm. you know, I think I think Starfield is gonna be one of those games they heavenly influencer pu pu push. They're gonna have influencers play. That's fine, you know. People don't realize how much strength like giant review uh giant streamers have. They can sell like like a big streamer like a Valkyrie or a Ludwig or you know th these giant colossal Twitch streamers and stuff like they have more power to sell your product than most advertising does. But the one thing I will agree with you is like, you know, big sports events, they need to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, uh when I worked at Dish and that was years ago, uh, they were already saying how the advertisers aren't really wanting to advertise as much on these cable TVs anymore because it's just, it, it, you know, I have said it before that they call it shotgun advertising. They they don't they, it's not targeted. They're just shooting advertisements in a crowd and hoping mm -hmm. some of them hit. Um, it, it seems like they, like everyone is coming away from that to a degree, uh, but I do think that you know, Xbox. And Bethesda need to make sure that this game is doing nothing, but we see it on YouTube. And what's funny is like if you look at it, because I I have premium, so even if there was commercials on YouTube, I wouldn't see it. So it, it's just like you know they they need to hit YouTube. They need to hit like I don't know what what's the big sports right now? Is it like NBA? Because oh, I know right NFL's now gone. we're in July. It's, it's baseballs currently right now. Baseball. So they need baseball and like the yeah. like the playoffs or whatever. Like mm. they that that's where they generally will hit towards marketing. Like, but as far as like watching uh, a, an episode of of three guys, f three guys, uh, two guys in one, whatever that show is called. Uh, two and a half men. Yeah, two and a mm -hmm. half men. That's what it's called. Watching two and a half men and seat in the commercial. I doubt you'll see that. But as far as like big sports events, you'll probably see that. You'll probably see a heavy push on YouTube, heavy push on Twitch, and you. I want them to do more things like the, like PlayStation does. It's like it's physical marketing, like mm -hmm. turning the 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 subway in New York into a Spider Man. You know, stuff like that. You know that's very costly, I'm sure. But how many, how many New Yorkers and and, and people in and Jersey go through that subway system? A lot. Every day. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, I never give up on old school marketing. It works. You know why? Because PlayStation is still able to sell new IPs, and they still have a uh, successful or decent um sales pitch because they still do normal marketing, TV advertisements, banners, uh, billboards, um, like Microsoft relegates themselves to Twitter profiles and, and, and sometimes YouTube banners and, and that's in, in, in Xbox dashboard, but well, what, they're only limited. Well, they're what, limiting themselves. What would you consider like traditional marketing? Traditional like, marketing. Give me a, 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 well, I want to see a, a, a play by play. I, the thing is, I, I still watch cable TV every now and then. I still watch sports. I want to see an Xbox commercial on TV. I want to see in a Starfield trailer uh, play in a theater and, and when I'm going to a big movie. 
Like, you know, they those, I agree. those movie, are movie movie presence needs to be a thing. Yeah. Like they definitely need to be. You know what I mean? And, and then yeah, sure. As far they as can, the cable they can, TV they can put Starfield on the bag of Doritos and Mountain Dew if they want to do that. That's cool. Whatnot. Uh, and, and I I agree with. It's just the cable TV. I'm telling you, there's very few. Like there's people that probably have like, you know, stuff that makes sense. Like you you know you you advertise a Coke bottle. It don't matter where you advertise that. You're gonna get someone that knows what the hell Coke is. It's one of the most so probably- sign a deal with Netflix and Hulu. Hulu plays commercials. Sign a deal with Netflix. Get like Starfield on a banner in the, in the Netflix home screen or something like that. You know what I mean? I but think- here's the thing: if we did see that, we wouldn't. Do you pay for Netflix with ads? I pay for Netflix. I don't know which version I got, but uh, do you see ads? N- nah. Yeah, it could, uh, smooth. We know you don't pay for the Netflix with ads. Stop it. No, there's, <laughs> a, there's Netflix with ads. Yes, it's free, or is it cheap? No, it's it's like six ninety nine or something. Like All right, well, if they're gonna be advertising Starfield, I'll downgrade my service so I can see it. Oh so my like, god! <laughs> Look, I'm not disagreeing with you. They yeah. need to heavenly market Starfield. I want to see this bastard on bulletin boards. I want to see this bastard uh, throughout, uh, you know, wherever that place is in New York. That that street that I walked down. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Madison Square, whatever yep, that shit on there. B- b- yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I want to see it everywhere. But I'm telling you, in terms of of marketing on on cable TV, I wouldn't expect a whole lot there because there's so many people that's cut the cord. It's unreal. You like yeah, but the Dish Network, the call center and Dish Network that lives in my area, they shut that shit down. Oh, really? They, like the the. The only reason cable TV has lasted as long as it is because the internet service. If yeah. there's services that don't have the internet service, they're going out of business. Give me one. No one is- give me one quick second. I, 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 you can continue on, but I, I just want to make one more call and I'm, I'm going to continue because this is a good conversation. I'm sorry. Yeah. So it, when it comes down to that, like, look, I want them, I'd love for them to be in the cable TV too. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you guys, but it's like I said, like, I learned a lot when it comes to like basic marketing when I worked at Dish Network and a lot of these advertisers, they still advertise there, but only if the marketing makes sense, if they have a target audience there. You know, I expect to see Microsoft, like I said, more on, you know, physical boards to to a degree, especially in bigger cities. I see I see a huge push on YouTube, a huge push on Twitch. You know, I expect a lot of influencers, a lot of streamers to play it. It's going to be a lot of marketing push. I just don't think it's going to be a, a huge front and center traditional marketing push. There's still going to be traditional values given to Starfield. You're still going to see it on big events. I just, in big TV shows that are still playing. Like, I, I remember back then they used to bring up The Walking Dead all the time. They don't really do it as much anymore. But, you know, when it comes to that, it's just one of those things where. It works, but how much does it realistically work? And I I think that's just something that people have to come to terms of how we're supposed to start promoting stuff. And we'll have to see, because I, I don't think no one's wrong. Uh, I do think, like, I'm pretty sure everyone that's watching, everyone that's listening, I'm sure you guys all want them to be more active in marketing. And I would say that here recently, especially the past couple of years, the marketing for Xbox has been you know, very underwhelming, but I don't think it has to do with any, you know, budget restraints or anything like that. I just don't think Microsoft's had a whole lot to market the past couple of years. You know, I do it's... think, huh? No, the same. The whole like they don't have like enough to market. Uh, you can market like you can market something. You can market your console. You can market Game Pass. They they, they, they do market the Game Pass and console. Yeah, but they See, don't thing, do it. My, every, they don't do it enough into the places where my, new people can come. My my thing is though is like my girl don't pay for for YouTube premium, and she said they'd be Game Pass commercials all the time on YouTube. Like they're doing this, we're just not seeing it. Do you pay for premium? YouTube, no, absolutely. Mm. So you you watch commercials every time? Yes, Attic. I watch it when I'm watching your videos. When I'm watching Destin videos, I have to freaking hit the. I have to wait for the little icon to show up on my screen so I can hit skip ad so the video can, can continue to play. So um, yes, I, 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 mean, I look at, at the end of the day. 
it's like I said, I, I respect everyone's opinion on that matter. I, I do think they need to be more hardcore in the marketing. I just want to keep people a little realistic that what you want, I don't think is going to happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, man, but also not even that, though. I, I, I do think they need to do um, previews like I, and I know that's probably coming soon, but like I, I want to see the Game Informer article. I want to see IGN first. Um, I, I mean, Gamescom, I don't want to Gamescom is what the end of August. Mm -hmm. I think like we should be already like seeing more of it. I thought there was going to be like a media marketing push, like from the moment that the Xbox game showcase ended, I felt like they were going to be on like a media blitz with this game because this game is supposed to be that big. It doesn't feel like it's that big. It really doesn't feel like it's that big. And it's discouraging because you want the game to be successful. You want everybody to be hyped for it. You want people to, you know, to buy it. You want people to subscribe to Game Pass for it. You want the the world to be on notice for this game. But I feel like Microsoft nor Bethesda is putting that marketing and that hype behind the game like you think they should. Sure, they had a little push with the, you know, the little controller that we did and the headphones and um, it was, and they, they so they, they're doing like low key things. They haven't doing something like they needed a console, even at least to get the Series S a custom console, bro. Like for this I thing, agree. like I think they they're failing so much in the custom area. You can't let PlayStation come out there and show you off when it comes to Star uh, Spider Man. Like you know. PlayStation just thought more about what the, where they were with custom consoles this gen. Because, you know, regardless, and I think if people generally believe that PlayStation didn't foresee being able to replace these wings on these PlayStations and make custom consoles more accessible to people, mm -hmm. I think you'll, you're, you're playing yourself. Like, they, there's no way that when they did this, that wasn't one of their thought processes is, you know, if we make these wings, uh, you know, detachable, we can easily do more when it comes to custom yeah. consoles because we, we could sell them more. Now you can argue that they shouldn't do that because there's a lot of people that double dip, but I would say yeah. there's more people that would buy these wings than they would go out and buy. Talk about the plates. Just, it's called them wings. Yeah. The plate. that, yeah no, I'm going to buy them. I, I, I currently have custom plates. on like, I have my original PlayStation plates is literally right here on the floor. I I I, I got custom plates on my PlayStation now, black ones. When the Spider Man one, well, I'll buy that and I'll put those one on there, um, as well. Might even buy it for my son. Yeah, you know, it, it's a good move. The 360 did this with their face place was a good move. It's a little quick, cheap, custom option, and they're doing something consumer friendly by like. Cause the thing is. The PlayStation can't do a real custom console, right? Um, that's worth it. They can't throw these Spider-Man plates on and, and they shouldn't be able to charge a, a penny more because face plates are cheap and they can make a custom face plate for any game they want to. And that's the limited edition console. Sure, you get the controller that they got to do a little bit of work for it. But um, no, Starfield is a big enough game where they, they need to put more of an effort and i'm really disappointed in the likes of pete hines todd howard aaron greenberg xbox and bethesda because they both had moments dude remember the hype halo 5 guardians had yeah like and i don't care how they the slander they got for quote unquote false advertisement it was good advertising they bought into uh, believe okay, was it okay. what was the the mantra hunt the truth you bought into I it. Can't, I can't. I can't. I no, bought into it. It, it, was, it was a good marketing thing. effort. I don't care. No, it, it was, was good no, marketing no. effort. I saw that we commercial ain't every sit here time. And say them lying to us. It doesn't matter, dude. Dude, it wasn't like they sold. No, Hunt the Truth. They came up with a marketing campaign. They showed you commercials and they fed it to us every week up until the game came out. I don't care if it was uh, wasn't you don't what care the game if they was, lied to but it was good marketing. It was good advertising. Very good advertising. Lie. I don't care if you hey, hey, if you have to lie to get good advertising. Continue to lie. So 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 smooth. W w would you not agree that it was a lie? I, the, it was not the truth. We played the game and we found the truth. We found out they wasn't really beefing with each other. It was hunt the hey, truth. Hey, that's hey, that's that's so smooth. You're not co-signing that. It, hunt the truth, and we found out the truth when we played the game. And we did we not? Otherwise, how can we call it a lie? We found out the truth. It just wasn't what we expected. So, so you think that? Here's the thing, though. If you're just gonna lie on on promotion mm -hmm. 
and marketing, obviously you could market like a like a king. Like come out there like PlayStation and, and say that, you know, Ratchet and Clank can only be done on the PlayStation 5. You want marketing like that? No, but the Halo's 5's marketing well, was nothing well, like the difference? that. What's the difference? They they lied in both. No, but the, those are the two different things. We're talking about like lore and, and, and story. We're we're the thing is they left they left it up to our imagination, right? With Halo five. So that's why I think everybody was overreacting with the whole oh Halo lied. Their marketing was uh I'm like, how? It says Hunt the Truth, they gave us two perspectives. They had Master Chief looking at a damaged freaking uh uh lock and then they had other scenes with lock looking at a damage and defeated master chief and it's just says hunt the truth it didn't it, it, yeah we thought it was going to be a fight between the two a fight did occur it just wasn't the whole the whole game wasn't about that it was actually barely about that but i would not compare yeah, that actually, to sony people, putting 8k on the box and saying ratchet and clank is only possible on the ssd actually people on youtube and, oh, actually, it would be it would be the uh, Patreon. I mm -hmm. uh, put someone super chat on Whopper Will and, 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 and bring Smooth to court over this because I cannot believe you're sitting here trying to tell me that the, the marketing for Halo Five was acceptable. Yes, it was very acceptable. It sold games. It was one of the best selling Halos at the time. Four hundred and ninety five million. Uh, it generated at four hundred and ninety five million uh, the week of release in revenue. That was awesome marketing. I don't think Halo Infinite has come even close. Halo Infinite had probably had more players because more players got access to the game for cheap. But in terms of Halo 5 was the last ever, like that was the most, the game, the one game on Xbox from first party that generated the most money first party wise was Halo 5 Guardians. I mean, and it was good effort, good marketing. And Starfield should be able to have the same impact if they do it right. Just market the damn game. Um, so, Attic, it looks like we have to go through maybe a couple more weeks of this ABK stuff. It's probably going, it's probably going to be quiet for a while, but it looks like CMA and Microsoft and ABK all came to agreements. They're going to sort this out. They're going to come up with something that they all can agree on. So the UK can pass a deal because somebody gave these fuckers too much power to be the only freaking regulator to like holding this deal up but they came to the sense their census in the last hour and they're reworking their deal they had court microsoft and abk agreed to extend their merger agreement with a new deadline of october i think 18th and the cma's goal is to have a verdict before or by august 29th though they stress they think they can have it before then and this is all assuming Microsoft comes up with this divesture or whatever, something they can agree with because UK is so important to gaming. Um, but this should, this is probably finally coming to an end. It's just Microsoft, as of this video, as of this podcast, they have not closed the deal, even though in the words of Phil Spencer, they technically can due to uh, um, legal developments. Yeah, they beat the FTC and they've been approved in every other country. They can literally close this deal, but to save face, they want to do the CMA uh, a favor um, and they, they want to do it the right way and they're going to do it the right way. And I think they only want to do it the right way because they got another acquisition around the corner, I think. And they, yeah, I think that's entirely the reason. It, maybe if they don't have a, an acquisition around the corner, like in order, if you close this, you're breaking the law in that area pretty much if they haven't approved it. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. It's just, you know, if they want to buy other stuff in the future, they're going to want to make sure that they have that down. Yeah, um, agreed. Um, and it's probably in their best interest to close the deal the right way. Don't piss anybody off. And because of the fight and the, uh, the valiant effort they showed with the... Um, this case where they've you know overcame an initial blocking that maybe they're less they're lenient with the next one you know you want to see my new shirt jujitsu Ju hi juju Ju 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 Ju. tokyo i'd have to mirror it it's jujitsu kaisen 
Oh, I don't know. That what is that? Uh, it's a, it's like one of the newest popular animes right now. Like this dude here, like is like OP as hell. Like every okay. time he's on the screen in season one, he's just messing everyone up. Like he's like one of those people where like even if you beat me, Gojo just gonna just gonna make you his bitch. Like you're muted. No, 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 no. I, 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 I wanted to be muted, but go ahead. Go. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I mean, when it comes down to it. As far as that, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm very curious. I want to uh, see more uh, of the CMA thing. I'm probably not going to talk about it a lot more unless, like, huge things happen. Because I don't think... I think the next big thing is either the CMA come to an agreement or it just approves. Or they block. I think those are the only three that we're really going to see. I don't, I, I don't see a, a block. I don't see how a block can happen. Otherwise, they need to freaking... The, the, the UK government need to d- dissolve the... CMA because they're the thing is is that I'm mad at the CMA because they're corrupt and I don't care what kind, whatever efforts they're doing to save face now their effort because of their last minute ditch is foolproof that they were literally working for the FTC this entire time it, because it's like okay now that the FTC lost you can't hold your own ground now you're actually going to study the case like it's it, it, it's it, it's it, it's they're they have no backbone. They're a weak regular re- regulator service. I don't like they have no backbone. They're they can't be trusted, and um, this whole situation really just exposed them. And and that's why I'm curious to see you know if you know Microsoft make a move for you know Sega whatever. Um, I think that's the whole reason. Maybe not Sega, but I think. I mean, know that uh, if- I don't believe it. I know you had a conversation with Destin on Iron. I don't think Take Two's an option. I don't think. Eh, I don't think you I don't do. That. I wouldn't even want them to buy tickets. It doesn't make sense. It, it makes sense. I get it. If they can get. I want them. But I, I want them to buy stuff that strengthens their portfolio, not just enhances it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that's it. I Sega. feel like strengthening your portfolio is increasing your weaknesses, not strengthening your already strengths. I feel like Sega is the easiest one because they will go through less regular uh, uh, regulatory scrutiny because they're buying it from someone else. They're not buying out someone else. They're buying a portion of someone. It's like going to a store, right? And buying their most... Uh, popular item right or like and, and i think i don't think a situation is going to be held to the same limit maybe they only require one regulatory approval to buy sega sammy from uh, to buy sega from sammy it's japanese base and all they need is with the japanese ftc japan ftc who came under scrutiny because they've been letting Sony slide all these years, who's probably just gonna give a quick thumbs up like they did with the ABK deal once uh, that they came under fire for that. So I think, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised that yeah, this deal closes and in the next two weeks, right? And then come, I'm gonna say come March or January, they announced Sega uh, with the close, with a three month closing period. You think it would be that that quick? You know, me and yeah. King have a uh, a bet going on right now. I don't know if you saw it on on IOP. It, from a year from last Sunday, if they haven't announced they're buying Square Enix, King has to eat a a, a, a five ch- uh, the the hot chip. Bag. He's gonna do the hot chip. Did he just do one? He said he, he's that see, he's that confident. Okay, who's that gonna, buy Square, gonna buy Square Enix? That Microsoft. No, not happening. Enix. Square, so, uh, Microsoft is not buying Square Enix for the simple fact, and, and it all makes sense now that, yeah, there were options, but the fact that once Microsoft announced the ABK thing, within months, Square Enix sold off their Western division, which is probably who my, what Microsoft would have acquired. It's, it, and, and then they stopped working with Microsoft for their, their Japanese stuff. I think uh, they were going to I think they were going to buy Square Enix last year. Yeah, yeah, they, they probably would have. It would have been a it would have been a nice move. I ain't gonna lie, I would have been. And I don't like now. The thing is, this version of Square Enix that they would have bought, I actually did like when they had when they were fully intact. You know, I respected that Square Enix, but I would have definitely gave PlayStation fanboys that heat when if Microsoft. Would, yeah, think about it. Think about it. If think, think about it this way, bro. If they have acquired Square Enix 
at that time, at this point, it would have had to happen before the ABK thing. It would have had to happen before then because that looked like it came out like last minute, right? So Square Enix was probably going to come, what, six months or so after Zenimax? Six, eight, six to eight months or so after Zenimax? That means Microsoft would have definitely gotten Final Fantasy VII Remake and they would have had Final Fantasy XVI potentially as an exclusive? Yeah, I think... Forspoken I think would have accurate. was probably already agreed to but it would have probably came to Xbox much sooner. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't, but yeah, it would, it, it definitely for the gaming streets, for our community, it, it, it probably would have been some thunder. It would have made noise and it. It, it would have been yeah, an intriguing. Be real. They would have bought Square Enix. The world would have ended on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, it would have been an, an, an intriguing buy. And so, I'm just happy. At least to the point, I'm no longer even no, no longer about this excited about this ABK thing anymore because it's how long it's been drawn out. I think the reaction would have been ten times worse if they bought Square Enix than Activision. Yeah, yeah. Because Activision definitely helps them achieve stuff with Game Pass, but you could argue them buying Square Enix would have hit would have hit PlayStation. You can even maybe even argue that it would have crippled PlayStation. Because mm-hmm. that's where a lot of their yeah, Square Enix carried PlayStation this from. entire PS5 gen so far. It's been them carrying, and the yeah, them in the Somniac, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so with that though, so pretty much we still got a couple more weeks of this a- Activision Blizzard stuff, and but Microsoft's influence is already starting to take place over Activision Blizzard. You know what this means. I you have a couple videos on there. I'm a little bit jealous. I almost bought literally the entire Call of Duty catalog because Microsoft. I, I, should, I should own Black Ops. Zachary, don't I own a couple of the Call of Duties? I didn't see yeah, it in I my should. digitally. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Unless the 360 games don't have game sharing, which I don't know. I've never really tried. Uh, yeah, me neither. Um, But this is the thing. So Microsoft fixed the servers to all the Call of Duty games, the 360 games, and improved them. Now they ain't only fixed them, they improved them. All the stuff that was broken in those games or that were considered troublesome, they've corrected. And what happened? Those games went on sale for up to 60% off. And now about seven Call of Duty games from the 360 era is in the top 10 in the sales charts, right? And the player counts are peaking. I think Black Ops 2 is up to a million active players right now. With games like uh, Modern Warfare 3 and and uh, World at War and like they're all like getting crazy amounts of numbers. And people are playing them on their Xbox Ones and their Xbox Series consoles. And you made an interesting video. That's And this is one of the most underrated features about Microsoft and and the Xbox thing. Backwards compatibility. It breeds extra life into these games. And I'm sorry, this is a competitive advantage uh, that Xbox has over the likes of PlayStation, over the likes of Nintendo, because you can't pick up your PS5 and go and play Black Ops 2 or Call of Duty 3 or Call of Duty World at War. You can't do that on your PlayStation 5. You literally have to pick up a PlayStation freaking 3 or a PlayStation 2. On the this is only system. possible on the Xbox. And then once this deal closes, the, and there's a high likelihood that Xbox does one of those things where they do that backwards compatible enhancements where they ups, get it the 4K resolution. Some of these games get FPS boosts. And that's that's going to bring even more players on there. So right now we're just playing like right now they play better right now natively on the Series X and S because they are get the, they get the run at their max frame rate they get the run at their max resolution targets. But when Jason Rado's getting the lab for those games and they got to do a couple little tweaks here and there to get those games looking like free remasters, that that's what I'm waiting for. Um, but. It's incredible because they literally just like sold Call of Duty a whole lot of a, a whole lot of copies of old ass games, and people are still playing them. But again, people make fun of 
people order and buy new consoles to play old games, there's still a demand. There's at this point, you could say there's more value in Xbox 360 games today than there is in, 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 in PS3 games because you can play those games today and some of them get like updated and, and, and stuff. So I'm kind of curious, like right now, let me let me look. I'm going to go to game stop. And I'm going to look up a copy of Black Ops. For the 360. All right, okay. So the 360 is 24.99 for Black Ops. Remember that. Black Ops PS3. Uh, Seven ninety nine. Seven ninety nine. That's his current sell price. Is this a disc or what's the one sell right now? Um, it's it's no, it's just the straight up copy. All right, seven ninety nine for uh, uh, where? Uh, GameStop. But for what platform? PS three. And how much is it for the three sixty? Uh, twenty four ninety nine. <laughs> oh no, that that's hold up, no, that that's for Black Ops two. Black Ops One, because the, the cases kind of look similar, so Black Ops Two is nine ninety nine, so it's still almost almost triple. Yeah, yeah. Black Ops One for the three sixty, ironically, is only five bucks at a uh, at GameStop. It's interesting. You can get the the Call of Duty Black Ops Collection for eighteen ninety nine. I wonder if there's a Black Ops collection for the for the PlayStation. Let's look real quick. Black Ops collection. PS3. 1890. No. <laughs> Whoa. They only have the 360 Black Ops collection. They don't even have a PS3 wow. Black Ops collection. Wow. And they just have like Black Ops bundle. No, that's 362. Wow, they don't they don't even carry it. There's no sense because they don't they, sell PlayStation. There's got to be one. There's no way they built they made one for one and not the other. I don't I don't there, I don't. There's no reason no reason why GameStop would carry would still be carrying PS3 games. Well, it's probably like an online thing. They they it's, they sell them. It's okay, just, it's probably for collectors. They don't probably sell them in the actual stores. But what do you think of the Call of Duty like resurgence of like and just like because remember the last time every time Xbox what was the last game that happened uh, the last FPS boost that they did they hit like a bunch of 360 games and one of the games was 50 cents of blood in the sand and the market value for that game freaking quadrupled you can't buy that game for less than like 80 bucks. I just think it shows that you know, people do value these because it, market demand. If no one valued them and no one is buying them, no one would raise the price of selling them. You know, yeah. if, if you have someone trying to buy 10 games off of you and you see the surge, you know, you're going to market it, it's, de, you know, it's, it's demand. And clearly the demand was high enough where they felt raising the prices wouldn't hurt their overall sales too much. And, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, you, they brought value into the 360 games because Microsoft took the time last generation to make sure that they were going to be relevant in the future. Okay. Uh, PlayStation didn't do it to the PS4 era. You know, th there's Xbox One games. Xbox One games. Like, not like Xbox One. Original Xbox games that you could take the disc, if I remember correctly, the disc, and put them in your Xbox, and they will work. Yeah, and that's another thing. Yeah. You could put, you could take a Black Ops disc, put that sucker straight in your Xbox. It's going to turn on. Yeah, it, it, it's still one of the uh, you know the the best features about the Xbox platform, and that's why it's easier to uh, it's easier platform to stick. Just a quick update. It looks like there's some information coming out from the CMA. They said the CMA is likely to be able to reach a new provisional view on the restructured deal in the week beginning August 7th. So that means uh, even though their deadline, their self deadline is August 29th, uh, 
they're they pretty much is going to be able to come they're probably going to be able to come up with a verdict between the 7th and the 11th of august and guess what i'm on vacation that week so i'm going to be available and ready to do videos and streams uh that week for sure so hopefully i'm able to uh, be there for the the breaking news of that um the other thing i wanted to um come up with uh, no no you i was watching a video before we went live and it's actually from you um i guess information came out about ps5 pro dev kits yeah so apparently you know it's been leaked like crazy and it, it's <clears throat> Oh, Eastwood came out, and I, I guess like at some point Phil Spencer said the Series X is yeah is their is their mid gen refresh, and it I I hope that's not the hundred percent the case. Look, I don't like mid gen refreshes, but if Xbox doesn't deem making a mid gen refresh important, the moment PlayStation decided to do it, it became important. Yeah, and, and I hope that they don't answer to that because. You're gonna have an Xbox One problem where every game's running better on the other platforms, and you know they got to be very confident in their games that's coming out in the next couple years to not make a mid-gen refresh with PlayStation. Now, if Avowed comes out, hits the way it's supposed to, Hellblade hits the way it's supposed to, whatever they do next with Starfield hits, you know, Elder Scrolls hits, uh, Perfect Dark hits, then Outer Worlds two. Yeah, State of Decay 2, then maybe they can choose not to upgrade and focus more on their first party. But until they show those, I'm going to be concerned of them not taking serious precautions when it comes to a mid-gen refresh because I could see it right now. Every game just running better on the PlayStation. Every game. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's fair. It makes sense if you're going to have a, a, a mid-gen enhancement. That, but that was also true. For the PS4 Pro, when it came out in 2016, there was no Xbox com competitor version to that platform. They had the PS4, which also ran games better than the Xbox One. The way and then they, have the P that they, they won't do they it. They won't yeah. even have it in 2025 either. Yeah. So if, if it's like a late thing and it doesn't happen until 2026, at that point, are they even going to do one if they're waiting to 2026? Because you know they're not going to release at the beginning of the year. I'm going to say this. They want the holiday. I so. don't know how much they can improve the PS5 um, in that turnaround time and like how big of a difference is going to be. But sure, I don't want mid-gen refreshes. I don't. I really don't. I feel like the leap between the Series X and the One X and the, and the, and the PS5 and the PS4 Pro, I feel like it's big enough. And I feel like we haven't even achieved some of the things these systems originally promised. So my thing is, it's like, I'm I, at this point, it's like, I'm not sure if it's even worth it. I'm, I'm not sure if it's uh, worth it for them to do it. Yeah, the PlayStation 5 is cool and whatnot. And at that point, realistically, I don't, I don't know if I would buy into it. Now, does the Xbox need to do it? Sure, they'll have that disadvantage i don't know how much power gap it would be between the ps5 pro and the series x um again the xbox series x to this day still hasn't even been leveraged yet i mean you can argue that nothing's been leveraged. No, nothing has really been leveraged uh, there's ps5 this is ps5 have they, they, they're still they're still getting releasing ps4 games right yeah they, I, I think spider-man will be like the first big game I would say is only on PlayStation 5 besides like a Returnal or Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. And look, like Ratchet and Clank's a good game, but we can't compare it to like those big echelon of games. Mm -hmm. and, and Returnal is just a glorified indie that I felt is a good example of what, you know, the indie type. Because for the most part, you don't really see a lot of, uh, you know, I know people are going to get mad that I'll call uh, Returnal an indie. It's but an indie. It's just like, huh? It's an indie. You, you I mean... It's, a, it's an expensive ass indie. They made that game as an independent a studio, a and then they got a, a high double A project, a high double A project. Mm -hmm. But I, I think what I respect them for doing is they took that like regeneration type of content that um procedure generation. What they, that well, what do they call the where you where you keep starting stuff over uh, and over the roguelite. Again? Yeah, roguelite. I I like because they took the roguelike. And they made it more into the AAA because I don't consider it a AAA, but it's close to a AAA. More close to something like Hades. Yeah, I feel like Hades is a better game, but as far as quality, Returnal is more closer to the AAA product. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like 
them doing that, there's going to be a lot more push towards those type of games because if they did see, look, Returnal may not have sold the greatest, but people loved it. So yeah. let's let's build on that foundation. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, no, I understand that. Um, but the thing is, is that, again, I don't know. It, it does. It does. It will it force Microsoft to respond? And my thing is, if they don't respond, then they just got to hit. Back when the Xbox One X was kicking the PS4 uh, Pros like ass, right? What did PS4 have that Xbox didn't? They had a lot of first party games that sort of negated that thing, right? Sure, you had better looking multi plats on the Xbox One X, but on PS4, you had Horizon Zero Dawn, you had Death Stranding, you have Days Gone, you had The Last of Us Part Two, you had Spider Man, you had God of War, you had things that sort of just negated that you know what i mean and in this case you know it might just be in reverse like xbox's best looking games literally are just about the you know touch down in in the years of uh 2023 and 2024 and their first party exclusives like fully exclusive for next gen is literally launching this year onward so again because of the way this generation started, the slow start, the chip shortage, uh, the lack of uh, next gen, you know, games. It's not I I think it, it it's it's probably it would be hurtful uh, to the PlayStation to do it, because, like I said, the PlayStation wouldn't have seen its potential. Um, and the thing is, I wouldn't want to do it because I think what it would do is it would I would in that case. I would probably just upgrade, literally upgrade my PC, literally upgrade my um, PC. It's, it's something I don't like doing because it's time consuming and it's expensive. But then again, it's like, I mean, keep buying a PlayStation. This PlayStation is going to be this. Is, they do these mid gen refreshes to keep the price at five hundred dollars. Pretty much. That's pretty much what it's probably going to be the vr2 is what uh 550 the p with the ps5 pro is probably going to be 556 hundred dollars no problem um but it depends man we got to see how much of a power gap it becomes versus the series x and if microsoft feel is if, if worse is if if it's worth doing and then again microsoft also technically they you got the you got the Xbox, but they also got all these other options, right? They have things like, and even though it's not made by them, they heavily support them to they become they become an extension to what Xbox offers. You got the raw gala, you got the you got the um, you got obviously the PC, all these things that they're able to like maneuver and manipulate to get people to buy into Xbox anyway. You know what I mean? Um, and, um, and so it may, it may not be necessary, but I'm not ready to see a next uh, or mid gen Xbox series at this case. I, I would like to see a mid gen Series S. I think the Series S could use a, a an upgrade, but Series X, no, not so much. Um, all right, so we're down to like you know our final talking point, and this is just something that just occurred today. We got another developer that's trying to piss off a fan base. Um, in this case, as always, it's the Xbox oh, yeah, fanboys. I, I was reading that during the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> the the Quantum Era developer. Now, this game is by this team. I think Team Killer. Uh, they've made Killer. one game. Killing the, the the studio. Yeah, they made they made one game that came out on a PS4 February 2020 under the radar, no reviews because it probably sucks ass. But they announced this game when the PS5 was announced, called Quantum Era. It looks like. It literally it's, it's a first person horror uh shooter and they've been promoting this game for years it's supposed to be a launch title it's supposed to be a ps5 exclusive then they switched up and said it's going to be multi-plat because they weren't getting the backing playstation wasn't paying for marketing for this game honestly it feels like another abandoned to me but what they did this time around is that you know they like to play up to the fanboy so some uh playstation fanboy like i think asked them about i guess uh no actually i don't even think uh they didn't even yes they quote tweeted uh i think a, a playstation fanboy about something um because they're they say they're, they're claiming their game is about to go gold we'll see we shall see but they stated 
they stated this. Yes, the current one is that the SSD in the Xbox is slow enough that we may have to put loading screens into the game between environments, whereas the PS5 is seamless and does not need loading screens at all. Look, I know people are going to disagree with this, but if that's what you got to do to sell your console, your game, then do it. Like, you know, they, they should probably find better ways, but if this is a company that don't really got deep pockets for marketing or anything yeah. like that, and the only thing they got is, is starting a console war thing and, and get the PlayStation fanboys to buy the game just because they shit on Xbox, then, you know, do it, man. Because at the end of the day, uh, you know, the game better be good, though. The game's like, going to be... Not the game's gonna be dog shit, dude. I mean, I'm gonna tell you this right now. The thing is, is like, how you a developer, right? Your job, and you get out this game, this next gen game that you're trying to sell. Your job is to sell the game. What you're doing is pretty much saying, oh yeah, the Xbox version is going to be worse. I'm advertising my game's gonna be better on one platform. So it should. I, I, as an Xbox fan, I'm not interested in your game. I'm not interested because one, they're 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 going off of this dude. This I don't believe these guys are reputable game developers because I'm. Did I have to think? Because now, if you're by you're saying this, you're pretty much saying that all the games that came out so far for the Xbox Series X and S and, and PS5 that came out that shipped so far with no loading or seamless loading for the Xbox are the exception. But your lone experimental game is the rule. Like you need to implement loading screens. You think and people realize that the the SSD speeds from the Series X and the uh, PS5, they're not that they're not that drastic. You know, today there are games that load faster on a Series X and S than they do on a PS5. And like it, it became that became a dead in the water argument long, long, long time ago. And then now even more now that PS5 games are coming out for PC and their recommended specs don't require an SSD, which shows, okay, well, you clearly don't need an SSD to run this game, a la Ratchet and Clank. Like, so I, I, I don't understand their play. It's just like, it, it's very corny. I can't stand when these developers do this, where they, they buy into the console. Where, and I don't even want to credit these dudes as being a developer, because right now these dudes are quote unquote funding this game with a GoFundMe. So they just try to make money, and they know PlayStation fans are the most gullible, most stupidest, most like individuals on the planet that will give their money, that will give their heart, that will give their soul to anything that discredits Xbox. That's how easy it is to get into their heads. Like and and, that's, and I'm like yeah yeah this is good we're 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 putting this on PlayStation Five yeah it's gonna be better on PlayStation Five send them to your GoFundMe so they can fund whatever you're doing and you pocket that money kickstarting yeah this is abandoned literally 2.0 and um because any developer that's making a game and we met many developers we talked to many developers independent developers that had no ties to no one that won't sell their game. On uh, they sell their game to uh, to be shit on one platform and big up another platform. They, they, they just don't do that because they want to sell the product. This dude is trying to stir something up. He's not selling his product because at this point, I'm no longer interested in this game. And I never was interested in the game. I think it's um, the game doesn't look interesting at all to me. Um, but I'm not interested in Team Kill Media. I'm not in interested in Quantum Error. And I'm not uh, interested in the game that we're going to release. PlayStation fans are going to get hyped, and some of them are going to get food into buying it if it does ship. This is literally a 56, 60 Metacritic score at best. It may not even qualify for review scores, by the way. Uh, it is what it is at this point. It's like I said, man, like I'm not co signing it, but if like the company truly feels like this is like one of the only ways to sell their game, that it is what it is but like at this point like don't don't expect it's like a cliff of a blitzy whatever he, however you pronounce his name cliffy b like yeah like cliffy b don't don't expect that when you make this stance if you need to promote this on xbox don't expect allies at that point yeah so it's like you know you you pick your side you pick it right 
you know, and, and people th- look at those numbers on PlayStation and just automatically assume that they're going to sell more. And that's not, that's never just the case. There's always factors and variables when it comes to selling games on platforms and how many people is definitely one of them, but it's not the only one. Yeah. 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 But, um, if you guys uh you know interested they're on twitter team kill media quantum era is coming out for ps5 and i think it's also coming out for the ps4 too um xbox series x and s and it's coming out for playstation first because these guys can't afford to ship games uh simultaneously um and uh this you know there, there, there's these weird one-off cases i know a lot of playstation fans are are slowly becoming border gate fans uh because it's launching on PlayStation 5 first, and this is the game that they're gonna utilize to combat Starfield. Um, and they're called, they're already hailing it the greatest RPG of all time, uh, I've been seeing on Twitter. Uh, but we'll, we, we shall see. Attic, man, uh, another show uh, we are able to do. Um, lot, not a lot going on in gaming, but Xbox had a few things um, that we needed to cover. And I'm sure, you know, next week, um I, I don't know what happens next week hopefully we get some starfield marketing um if not i don't know not sure if we'll i don't know we probably still find a way to muster up a show depending on what happens uh, i'm gonna try to play some uh video games so i've been on like a, a really a long break i haven't really you know you know what we could do what's that bring some people from weapon will on and we'll talk about the state of xbox mm, let's do that after this ABK deal closes. Okay. You're like, let's do that when yeah. I have some, yeah. some ammunition going into the fight. <laughs> yeah, I would like to get no, a couple of I would like to get Dark uh Dark Doc. I'd like to get Mr. Maddie plays. I'd like to get uh obviously uh King and Cog and I also wanna you know, maybe we get get Game and Forte one day. Um so cause he's always a good talk. But um did you see that I suggested on Twitter Twitter? To have like a big community day with IOP and Weapon Will? Yes, yes, I saw that. I did see that. And that can happen. It's very possible. Um, but I think it would be interesting if like, well, obviously everyone doesn't have to go to it from the panels, but I would like like doing like 30 minutes, like having us like swapping, like playing a game and swapping teams. Like, you know, you, co- you play with us and like King plays with you guys, like just sweet swap them up and then like, open it to like all of our communities and it would be cool if we did it between our podcasts yeah yeah that, that, I think that, but would, that would involve us to only go two to three hours so we have time between our podcasts <laughs> right right um all right guys i mean you got anything you wanted um to share before we get out of here for the night yeah so um tomorrow we're having yang yi on well sunday we're having yang yi on uh, it's going to be interesting. We're probably going to, uh, you know, brush up a little bit on, uh, you know, the criticism to his voice acting. I know yeah. a lot of people are going to want to talk about that. Uh, he, I think he said we got him for an hour and a half to two. Uh, so that's pretty good. And then, uh, you know, King King talking about uh, his his topic is is like the PlayStation 5 or whatever. I don't know. Something I, I saw Tom Henderson tagging us in it and said, I can't wait to see how King's saying that this PlayStation bundle is going to be a thousand a thousand dollars <laughs> no he's talking king's topic is the playstation 5 pro okay so he said i can't wait to see how king's going to spit it saying this is going to be a thousand dollars yeah right, right. <laughs> oh man yeah i'm looking forward to it i'll be able to t- i should be able to tune into the uh, show um weapon will i don't think we're going on that show this week we we are doing a game night uh I'm not sure if I, I'm uh, I think game, right? World War Z. I got to I think I got to buy it on PlayStation or I think it might be a PS Plus game. Uh, so I, I should probably be able to, you know, volunteer in that as well. Um, again, I want to tell you guys, thank you for joining uh, the podcast, the Patreon and supporting the show in the way you have uh, the episode nine, you know, over 10K views uh, definitely help the podcast and hopefully we can carry on the momentum. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel at Kids Move. Been doing videos at it. Got the thumbnails on lock. If you want to 
see somebody with some good thumbnails, uh, you know, pay the man, he'll give you some good ass thumbnails and, you know, and get the, the viewers there. So uh, we're going to have some videos uh, coming out more uh, throughout the week. I'll, I'll post some videos uh, for you guys uh, to check out throughout the week. Uh, got some topics I'd like to cover, trying to catch up to Attic and what he's been doing over the past couple of weeks. Um, yeah, but that, that's right. That's that's the energy. Catch up to me. <laughs> But other than that, man, uh, we're going to, you know, keep doing our thing. You know, shout out to everyone. Thank you for the support on the Patreon, on the podcast. Shout out to BG on 100K. Shout out to ILP, 3K live viewers. Uh, you guys hit that peak, uh, which is uh, pretty dope. Doesn't happen yeah, we hit, often. we hit 18,000 subs in the same podcast. In the same podcast, so congrats. You know what's crazy? We hit 18,000 subs. Uh, when we started that podcast, we was at like 17,800. Yeah. So we hit over 18,000 in that podcast, and we're sitting right now at 18,600. Okay, so you're going to be at 20K so, in no time. Yeah, hopefully, man. I, I'm really, I, I would love to hit 20K this year. I would love to hit That's 20K. definitely within I reach, would, bro. I would like to hit 5K on my personal channel and 20K on IOP. Both achievable. Very achievable. Very, very achievable. And by the end of next year, I, I want to double that number on my channel. I want it to be at... Uh, I'm just games. trying to get to 15K on my channel this year if I can. Um, but I know I, I got to work a little bit harder. Um, and, you know, it's all about having the energy uh, and the commitment to do so. But thank you guys again for watching. We'll see you guys on the next episode next week. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best spot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We are out of here. Peace.